Welcome to the College Investor Audio Show. We are so honored that you are here today. Our topic, Graduate School Admissions Guide. A kind of Graduate School Admissions 101, if you will. But before we get started, go ahead and hit subscribe to the podcast. And you can also hit us up all over social media. Just search for The College Investor pretty much wherever you are. We are there too. And anything we talk about today is also inside of an article that corresponds with this podcast at thecollegeinvestor.com. All right, let's get to it. The Complete Graduate School Admissions Guide. Okay, so of course we know this. Graduate school is an opportunity to advance your education and further your career. While post-pandemic applications are way up, actual enrollments are down. So right now, really, is as good a time as ever to send your application in. Additionally, too, and a huge perk of graduate school, your career earnings are likely to outpace those of someone without a graduate degree. For 2022, the Bureau of Labor Statistics reported an annual median wage difference of $11,900. That's like 229 extra bucks weekly. And that's just a difference between a bachelor's and a master's. Other professional or doctoral degrees can lead to even higher annual incomes. Now, what steps should you take to even get started doing this? Well, we've got you covered. Here, we'll talk about the decision to attend graduate school, the types of graduate programs available, how to choose the right school, and even what you need to deliver a killer application packet. Okay. So first off, we ask the question, should you pursue graduate school at all? All right, well, pursuing graduate school was really one of the best decisions that I've ever made. But it wasn't a walk in the park at all. I put in a lot of hours mastering my skill. If you're interested in doing the same, start by asking yourself these questions. Why do I want to go to graduate school? Why do I want to go, or or what do I want to do, rather, with my graduate degree after I receive it? How will I choose the right program for me? How do I apply to this graduate school and what is needed and what is the cost of graduate school and who's going to pay for this thing? I suggest these questions as a way to really get a clear understanding about the path forward before you invest your time, energy, and money into the application process. Why? Well, because regardless of your motivation, you want to be sure the experience you desire will provide the return on investment you actually expect. It might even help to draft a pros and cons list to kind of get your thoughts and concerns written out onto a piece of paper. And aside from this, there are, of course, circumstances that absolutely warrant attending grad school. For example, entry into professional fields like law and medicine, going to require advanced schooling and credentials, of course. And then conversely, you might just want to be in a unique position, or you might find yourself in a unique position of having an employer who's actually willing to pay for your degree, and you simply want to take advantage of that benefit. In either situation, just make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. Okay, now let's take a look at some types of grad degrees. Graduate school typically refers to the work one does in pursuit of a master's or a PhD. These degrees may or may not be needed for your chosen career field. Conversely, law and medical school, while technically also graduate studies, meaning students must first earn a bachelor's, are required prerequisites to entering a career in law or medicine. They're often referred to as professional degrees because they prepare students to work in a very specific profession, requiring certain academic and licensing attainment. Let's look at that master's degree. The master's degree is often referred to as a sprint because it's like one to two years of full-time enrollment to complete. Common master's degrees include a Master of Arts, MA, Master of Science, MS, though specialized master's programs are also available. This includes a Master of Business Administration, or an MBA, and a Master of Public Administration, or MPA. Master's degrees provide advanced exposure to a specific field and also prepare students for more specialized, yet versatile careers. Doctoral degree. All right, so if the master's is a sprint, then you know the doctorate's a marathon. This degree requires several more years of study, typically four to seven years beyond a bachelor's degree. It provides even more specialized training and prepares students for careers in academic and research-focused fields. Professional degree. A professional doctorate is the highest academic credential in its respective field. So, for example, a Juris Doctor, or JD, 
is the highest academic achievement needed to become a lawyer, or a doctor of medicine, MD, to become a health practitioner. Now, professional degrees vary in length and focus on practical training specific to that field. Now let's move on to actually applying to graduate school. So you've decided to go to graduate school. That's good. That's one key decision out of the way. Now, what are you going to do to prepare for the application process ahead? While many pieces of the application packet are kind of general components required by all graduate programs, the degree you pursue will ultimately decide which entrance exam you're going to take and how to tailor your personal statement. So let's break down some of those requirements here. Aside from the obvious requirement of obtaining a bachelor's degree, some programs will look for a, more, a few more criteria before actually admitting you. So, for example, most MBA programs require a bachelor's from one of two types of accredited in institutions. Additionally, because graduate school builds on your existing knowledge and skills, some programs require applicants to have at least some amount of work experience before being accepted. This is especially common for professional degrees. In general, though, these are the application requirements to keep in mind. All your transcripts. You're required to submit transcripts from all previous post-secondary universities. And not only transcripts, not only do transcripts indicate your aptitude, of course, for academic success, but they also detail all the coursework you completed. Your minimum GPA, this is of particular importance. Professional degrees typically demand a higher GPA of their prospective students. However, a GPA within the 3.0 to 4.0 range should put you in a good position with most schools. Your test score or test scores if you take multiple tests. Applicants are required to submit scores from the respective standardized test taken for their program. We're going to talk about this a little bit later on because this is where program requirements differ the most. All right, and then we move on to letters of recommendation. Almost all programs ask for at least one letter of recommendation to verify your qualifications and your past achievements. In a personal statement, too, applicants are often asked to submit a personal statement or a letter of intent to demonstrate your personal qualities and characteristics, as well as your interest in and commitment to graduate studies. Graduate school exams is next on the list we talk about today. Admissions exams deserve their own section because they can be the most anxiety-inducing aspect of the whole process, for sure. The test you take will depend on the degree you want to pursue. And there are differences in what these tests look for, so make sure you sign up for the right one. <laughs> You'll typically take the GRE to enter into a standard master's or doctorate program. The GRE tests critical thinking, reasoning, and analytical writing, and is known to be accepted by a wide variety of graduate programs. We have an in-depth look at the GRE and the next test we're going to talk about, the GMAT, and they each have their own dedicated article and podcast at thecollegeinvestor.com, and also go back in the archives of the podcasts and you'll find it too. And we talk about the GMAT real quick too. It was specifically created for MBA programs and accepted by more than 2,400 academic institutions. The GMAT tests your analytical writing and problem-solving abilities, as well as data sufficiency, logic, and critical reasoning skills. There are some subtle differences in how the GRE and GMAT are structured, the types of questions asked and total test time, but they're typically accepted by schools interchangeably. The Law School Admissions Test, LSAT, is specific to, you guessed it, law school. <laughs> Unlike the GRE or GMAT, your LSAT score is, um, or LSAT, is based on the total number of questions answered correctly. All test questions are weighted the same, so the total number of questions you get right matters more than any you get wrong. Interesting. Now the MCAT. This is for medical school in the U.S. and most in Canada. Like the other tests we've talked about today, the MCAT assesses your ability to problem-solve and think critically. However, it also tests your knowledge of natural, behavioral, and social science principles that are requisite concepts in the field of medicine. After submitting your application, let's take a look at this. Now, you got it all done, and then you just wait. After you submit your application packet, the admissions committee will review your materials along with those of other prospective students. 
Graduate schools receive hundreds of applications each year. So just try to be patient with this part of the process, although applications are down. Programs that stick to a December or January application deadline often send out acceptance notices by the end of March. However, programs that accept applications on a rolling basis can likely respond with the decision in 8 to 10 weeks or so. Some schools like to hold admission interviews, so you could use your downtime to prepare for those. And then we bring it all together. Deciding to pursue a graduate degree is an exciting time, but the application process can be costly and time-consuming. Focusing on why you want to attend graduate school, what you hope to do after, and how much school you can realistically afford, that's all going to help you narrow your search. Then switch gears to assembling the items needed for your admissions packet, keeping these pro tips in mind. Three things. One, build out a timeline from present day to the admissions deadline and work backward from that deadline to schedule your testing date. Two, reach out and talk to actual graduate students in the program you're considering. And three, visit the campus to get a feel for the surrounding community and environment. And that is our show for today. Kind of a quick and dirty take on graduate school admissions. If you want to dive a little bit deeper, we have all kinds of links to everything we talked about today at thecollegeinvestor.com. Right inside this article, just copy and paste the title of the podcast right into the search bar and you'll find it. Also, questions, comments, anything, we'd love to get to know you better. Follow us all over social media. Just search for The College Investor and you'll find us. Thanks again for stopping by today, and we'll talk to you again real soon.